All right, good evening to the uh, North Idaho College Board of Trustees special meeting on May uh, 13th, 2022. Uh, if you, uh, Mark, if you would uh, confirm we have a uh, quorum, please. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum of all five board members. All right, thank you. If you all would join me to uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, the first item on the agenda is an action item. Uh, Presidential Search Committee representation slash change. Uh, uh, David Wold will uh, start that. I move that in the light of Ken Howard's willingness to resign from the Search Committee and as co-chair of that committee, we replaced as co-chair of the Search Committee by Trustee Boshek. Second. I have a motion, I have a second. Do I have any comments or questions? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The motion carries. Next on the agenda is again an action item. <clears throat> compensation parameters for presidential candidates and to determine dates for final candidate interviews. Uh, John Getty is the point for that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I think this is a place for some board discussion. Uh, we have a motion uh, ready to make, but uh, we need to establish some parameters, a range uh, that might be offered to a candidate, uh, a finalist. <clears throat> and there's been a lot of discussion. I've looked at uh, the salary ranges of the other community college presidents. And I, I think I'm going to suggest that the base salary be someplace between 220 and 240,000 with the realization that the contract will be negotiated and there may be some additional costs involved in, uh, in benefits provided in a contract. And Mr. Chairman, if there's no discussion, I'm ready to make a motion. Well, we can have discussion before the motion or after motion second, but if we would like to have some now, we can. Um, that would be fine. Anybody have any discussion, comments, or questions? I would. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Trustee McKenzie. If I just may express my opinion, I'd say that's probably, um, I would like to see a lower range um, they expanded below personally. And I was thinking more even to the 180 range. And I'm not necessarily saying that it's going to be 180, of course, because all depends on the candidate and years of experience. But that's what I was uh, initially thinking when I saw this agenda item. All right, well, I guess I'll wait in with some comments. This has been a topic of conversation. I actually addressed the, uh, you know, faculty assembly about this, Molly Mashad invited me and I talked about this topic and I've talked about it for my entire time on the uh, board. Um, Compensation is always an interest to me as a fiduciary and the contracts themselves and the lengths of the contracts. When we went to the acting president, as I said, when I spoke with the faculty assembly, we reset briefly at 200,000. When we went to the interim president, we reset at 180,000. And I thought about that, 180,000 doesn't sound like a lot, it seems to some people. But when I say it is $15,000 a month here in North Idaho, I think that number resonates a little, a little differently. So I did talk with Dr. Wald a little bit about this. Well, I thought I had that silenced, I apologize. So much for my high tech phone. Um, and I had expressed to him that I had been kind of at a base of 180 uh, was my thought to reset. And I, again, I talked about that about with the finances and the numbers. 
and has publicly had uh, put that out there. As we discussed it, I will see, I guess we agreed or we talked about it, maybe that I could consider 180 to 200,000. So uh, I'm a little surprised by your starting point, to be honest. Um, but 180 to 200 for me, for me, I think is a good place to start. I think there's some risks and why we need to start a little bit lower. One is you're going to hire somebody and we don't know if the faculty and staff will, will take to them and if, the, if it's going to be a good fit or not. Two, we are going to have an election in November and we're going to have a new board. So hopefully it's a board that that president wants to work with and hopefully it's a president that that board wants to work with. Third, fourth, the better he does and the longer he's here, it gives us the ability to increase and give him raises and incentive and to reward him for a job well done. The higher you start, I think the more you're limited in how you're gonna move it up. And I don't know that there's as much incentive there. So for all those reasons, I'd like to start a little bit lower with the ability to reward a job well done. And we look at this on an annual basis and then we can bump him up or her, whoever it might be. So those are my thoughts. I just think we're dangerous to start too high. I think CWI is an outlier. Again, Dr. Wald and I talked about that. And looking at the others, including Eastern Idaho, I, I think we're in an okay spot for just to start. Are there any other comments or suggestions, questions? Mr. Chairman. Trustee Getty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> if we start too low, we are not gonna get a quality candidate. It's gonna take some doing for a candidate to come here it's, an, it's a cost, our uh, housing market now is at a premium. There is a president in this state that's earning $300,000 a year. I think that's out of feasible range, <clears throat> but I want to find a quality candidate and I don't think we're gonna find it for less than a salary range of between 220 and 240,000 for a base salary. Therefore, I move that the board instruct the presidential search consultant to advise candidates that the salary for this position is anticipated to be in the range of $220,000 to $240,000. I have a motion. Do I have a second? May I have one more discussion, or I guess we can... After the second. I second. I do have a second, okay. We can continue with more discussion. Trustee McKenzie. Would you be open to... Um, a mixture to get to 230 for the first year as there is travel anticipate assume travel or something um, to where like the first year he, he maybe even gets uh, a 30,000 moving stipend and, and then it be say 210 um, with room to go up to where you think would be uh, Mr. Chairman. Trustee Getty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Normally, additional benefits are negotiated in the contract. That would include such things as moving expense, health insurance, potentially retirement. Uh, what I'm talking about is the base salary. Which he'll already be eligible for Percy. If we do something additional for retirement, full benefit package with health and dental, vision, disability, and you throw on any of the other things, we're gonna quickly be approaching the $300,000 anyway. And quite frankly, I think most people in this county would be appalled at those numbers. When it came out public with, uh, what the former president was making, uh, it wasn't just eye rolling, it was some people that were rather perturbed about it. And I, I got a lot of feedback that they couldn't believe that I was party to that, that we had been paying that much to start with. So I, I think we set ourselves up for quite a bit of criticism at those sorts of numbers. I, I think the average person in Kootenai County, especially the more you move away from downtown Coeur d'Alene is gonna chafe at those numbers and, and think that they're unreasonable and too high for a community college whose enrollment were only 4,000, 5,000 students. I mean, even in the world of community colleges, we're small potatoes. And yeah, the CWI guy's making that money, but their enrollment's like four times ours. 
And there's some things we have that they don't. In Eastern Idaho, College of Eastern Idaho doesn't have all that we have. Closest is probably CSI. We're still pretty close to them with the numbers we're talking before we get way high uh, with what Dean Fisher's making. So again, I, I caution us to, to not start too high. It's going to continue to grow as we do talk about the other uh, additions to the potential base contract. Chair Van Chad. Trustee McKenzie. Just for context to, I'd be willing to guess, I don't know the exact number, but looking at the different salaries for the past couple of years, I would very confidently guess that the average salary of North Idaho College is between 60 and 70K. So to have a, a president's base salary close to, sorry for my math, four times that on top of additional benefits and deferred retirement packages, it, it just seems not. Uh... Mr. Chairman. Trustee Getty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would remind this board that whoever is hired is going to be stepping into what remains of a toxic environment. And we're going to have to pay a premium for that cost. Oh, oh please not there. But yeah, you know, I, I've been hearing those things. Okay, I'm going to comment now. Let's call myself. I'm so tired of that red herring. Did you tell me why all those people applied then? Why did everybody fight to become the acting and interim presidents? Even the people internally, even the people that retired said, well, I'll stay if I get to be president. I mean, it's amazing how many people want to be president of this college. And would we have, uh, yeah, was it 57? I mean, some crazy numbers from all over the country. I mean, Oklahoma, Kentucky, Texas, you name it, East Coast, West Coast. So, so tell me what I don't know, or tell me what Angela Provart's telling all these people that everybody thinks this is a dream job and they all want to come here when supposedly we've, we've, we're underwater. Uh, the college is on life support. I saw that in the paper the other day. Oh, we're going to lose our accreditation. Uh, and no, we're not. Um, we're financially insolvent. I know that Sarah Garcia is probably indignant about hearing some of that nonsense and about the thing about the bond rating. Uh, tenth of a percent. I mean, come on, seriously. So yeah, we've built a nice narrative, and you know, Sonny's been helpful to Rick and the gang, and gave you guys cover. And Mike Patrick does that from the press. That's fine. The tragedy here is that you guys have manufactured and created this crisis by self-reporting on yourself, on ourselves, and shooting ourselves in the foot. The college is functioning. We just had a very successful graduation today. Kids are being taught. Teachers are teaching. Yeah, it's a terrible situation to be here on the river and the lake, at this beautiful campus and this beautiful community where everybody and their dog wants to come to, which is why you just told me that the average price of a house has gone from 250000 to 500000 why my younger son and his wife can't get a house because he can't afford the payment. So, no, that, that, I don't accept that answer at all, that people won't come here because obviously we've told them that it must be okay, and Angela's been doing that all along, so... And we waited to just now to have this conversation about salary. So, you know, I guess we waited, we waited, we waited, and everything's really going to be okay. And then we'll have this new board after the state board does their thing. And the governor jumped in and helped. How much does a trustee cost, by the way? I, I'd like to know, or two or three trustees. Um, so here we are. And so I, I, I don't, I don't, that's not a valid statement that somebody's coming into this. Obviously, their eyes wide open and, and they've been informed of what they're walking into. So Mr. to Chairman, overpay, I, I disagree. Mr. Chairman, a point of order, please. Uh, I'd like to remind the board that, that this motion is simply to set a range that the, the, the search committee can advise candidates. It does not establish what the pay is, what the compensation is. That will be when the committee makes its selection, that will be discussed with the board and it will be negotiated with the board and final approval of any compensation package will rest with this board, but that we're not at that point yet. No, but we're providing a reasonable expectation. I have a question with that. Trustee McKenzie. Uh, Mr. Lyons, so if this board says the range of, what, would you repeat the range again? Was it 220 to 230? 220 to 240. 220 to 240. And let's say for some reason, this board decided to pay with the final interviews, 220. That would be abnormal and unexpected and problematic. Would that not be, Mr. Lyons? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Trustee McKenzie, 
Uh, I, I can't say that that would be abnormal. I would say that that this would be a range that would be that would be told to final candidates that this is what the what the board is is considering. Um, so when you get to that point, you will make your decision based on the candidate that, that's available, what, what what the board can agree to. So no, I can't say that that would be unusual. I'm uh, it, it will be whatever it is, depending on what the board and the candidate agrees to. Any other Mr. Chairman, questions? You bet, uh, Trustee Brochette. If you look at the the six local colleges, um, what their budget is and what they're paying their president, if you throw out the high and low and average that percentage based on NIC's 2021 budget, the position should pay about 226000 if you base it on the new budget for two for 23 it should pay 247,000 so the 220 to 240 range falls right in the average base salary based on the college budgets for local colleges sir may i ask which colleges you're referencing uh college of eastern idaho spokane falls community college college of southern idaho and i these in there, Spokane Community College and College of Western Idaho. Okay. So we've got a couple from Washington, and then we have the CWI one, which is the real outlier, which I think is the one that's definitely skewing the percentages a little bit. Correct. So that's why I threw out the top and the bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you look at College of Southern Idaho, which has a budget uh, just below North Idaho College, they're paying their president 230000 even. And what is the College of Eastern Idaho again? Uh, excuse me, that was College of Southern Idaho. No. Oh, what is College of Eastern yeah, Idaho paying? I don't have it right in front of me. Uh, 315,000. So that's... But they have a budget that's 30 million plus higher than... I, I I, that would be College of Western Idaho, I believe. Oh, you're right, excuse me. That's oh, okay. Uh, College of Eastern Idaho was 196,000. Okay. But it has a budget of... Approximately thirty thousand below North Idaho College. All right. Are there any other comments or questions? Uh, I'll make a maybe contrarian motion to uh, move the range down to one ninety. That would you would need to ask for an amendment to the motion, sir. So I, I make. A motion to amend his motion to make the minimum range to be 190. Is there an upper uh, upper limit to that? Uh, it can, the upper limit can stay, um, but the uh, minimum range. So that would be 190 to 240. The original. Uh, Range, if I understood it correctly, was 220,000 to 240,000. So if you wanted to amend it with a lower threshold of 190,000, uh, not adjusting the upper, that would make it 190,000 to 240,000. So moved. Okay, so we have a motion to amend. Mr. Chairman, you don't have a second. I haven't asked for one yet, sir. I was just clarifying the motion. Usually at this point, I look over at Mr. Lyons because he's the one writing it down, trying to make sure that he has has it correctly down. Uh, yep. uh, I will second Trustee McKenzie's oh. motion for the purposes of discussion. Mr. Mr. Chairman, just, just to clarify so the board understands, we have an original motion, but right now we're talking up. Uh, we're amendment. discussing a, a, an amendment, a motion to amend the original motion. That has to be voted on first. The motion to amend the original motion is to change the range from 190 to 240. That is correct. I understand. Is that clear to everybody else? We're working with the amendment at this time. Are there any other comments or questions or discussion on the amendment to the original motion to adjust the range, the lower end of the range from 220 to 190,000?
All right, I don't see any discussions, comments. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. 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 The motion fails. Back to the original motion. Is there any other questions, comments, or discussion on the original motion? Not seeing any, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The motion carries. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes, Trustee Getty. <clears throat> we have a second motion. I move that the board instruct the administration to work with the search consultant to determine dates for final candidate interviews. Do we have a second for the motion? Second. I have a second for the motion. Is there any comments, question, or discussion on the motion? I, just, just for clarification. Trustee that, McKenzie. Chair Banducci, uh, Trustee uh, Getty. That, that's for the search committee? Mr. Chairman, Trustee, Trustee, uh, Trustee it is the search committee, yes. Okay, thanks. Thank you okay. for that. With the consultant. All right. Is there anything else? All right, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The motion carries. The next item on the agenda, again, is an action item. It's uh, property and casualty insurance coverage reconsideration. Uh, Trustee Getty and Mr. Lyons. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as was reported in the paper and with Dr. Sabali's report to, or email to uh, the college, the North Idaho College has been, uh, has been, has received notice of non-renewal from the Idaho County's risk management program. That non-renewal will be effective uh, July 1. So our last day of coverage is June 30. <clears throat> it's an, an extremely tight time frame for the college's current insurance agent to put together any alternative bids. Uh, I understand from the president that there've been a couple of other companies that have expressed some interest. Uh, the joint powers agreement under which the the uh, um, ICRIMP works and who, which every one of the entities has signed uh, allows for uh, a, a decision of the board from ICRIMP to be uh, appealed. And I suggest that that's the first thing that we need to do is uh, uh, make arrangements to, uh, for our board to appeal to their board. And it, it's got to be done very, very soon. So I would move that the board authorize the NIC board chair to request a hearing before the ICRIP board to revisit and seek rescission of the decision not to renew the college's property and casualty insurance. And I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, we are open for discussion. All right, nobody else does, I, I have some been a number of inquiries uh, since this hit the paper. And uh, most of you saw it above the fold on the front page. And a lot of people have, again, have had a lot of questions. And so they're wondering what, why we lost the insurance and, and why are we appealing it? And, and why don't we go to, to commercial coverage? And, and what exactly uh, transpired or, or contributed to being here? And the paper had an interesting perspective. Uh, I'd like to share uh, some additional information. On that table over there is a copy of the letter from ICRIM. If you'd like to see what the actual letter says. Also on that table is a copy of the loss runs. Now, the paper very casually, and I hope, I hope we have a representative from the press here today. That would be very nice. Representative from Mr. the press. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. But it was a Mr. large Ch windstorm. They mentioned it briefly. I'm well, that, Mr. Guess. Chairman, that last run is not public information. Well, that is it, confidential. Well, apparently it is now, sir. I've made it public. And uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this because obviously they know about all this and they're smart about it. So the windstorm that may have had some impact, 
was 1.5 million plus of the 2.3 million. The rest of it's under the prior president, EEOC complaint, uh, whistleblower discrimination, retaliation, misconduct, IHRC retaliation, discrimination, disability, alleged wrongful advice from advisors, uh, another IHRC complaint, another IHRC complaint. You know, I've had, we've had no personnel claims under Dr. Sabali, but we had plenty under the prior administration. And then the only claim that's been of recent, which is a small percentage, just barely 10% of this, was from the same individual who was in charge for all these other claims. So the fact that people are saying that we don't work with iCrimp, that's not true. I have the report from iCrimp because I worked with the attorney from iCrimp for over two months, talked to him every day, multiple times some days. Now, one of our trustees called him up and said, hey, this is what I want you to do. So Christy says, you've got to tell Todd to do this, and this is what you need to tell him. And the iCrimp attorney says, no, I'm not, that's not what I'm doing, and that's not right, and that's not what we do. She never spoke to him again. So she puts in the paper and tells people that iCrimp says that NIC refused to work with them or that I refused to work with them. Not true. I worked with extensively with the iCrimp attorneys, have the report, in fact, I have the cover letter from Mark Lyons on the report, alluded to the report with Dr. Wold the other day when he was in my office. So I want the people to know that this is wrong and that Todd Banducci and, and that by extension, Greg McKenzie did not lose our coverage. Uh, Rick's thing is barely 10%, but it's all the rest of it, including the windstorm that was kind of an oh, by the way. So it's nice for people to take shots and to completely repeat lies and misinformation and, and, and say things that like, we're not working with iCrimp. I have a whole folder from working with iCrimp. And, and, and the report from Mr. Hall that says, here's your options. And then I followed down as he described the options and how we needed to proceed with those options. So we just need to set the record straight. There's a whole lot of stuff, most of it in the 18, 19, 19, 20, and 2021 into the beginning there. Uh, so it's, it's, that's not anything to do with the last year. And, uh, and I, I don't like being maligned and, and mistruths and lies in the paper that are being repeated. So I guess to the press, if you're gonna help the college, some journalistic integrity and honesty would be helpful and accurate information. And once things have been repudiated, and you've given correct information, please stop using the old incorrect information. So the sheet's over there for everybody to see, and you can see what the actual claims were. You can see who was responsible for the claims were, and don't hang it around my neck one more second. So there we are. Um, Mr. Chairman, can I speak to the motion? You certainly may, sir. You and I Trustee talked Wolf. about you. You and I talked about this at length. And, we did, and you shared with me a, a lot of information. I don't think the, the motion is accusing anybody. I think what we're doing here is we're saying, what can we do to remedy the situation? So this is just a positive step to try to see what we can do to remedy a, a non renewal from this company. So uh, let's let's stick with the motion, stick with the present, and not spend a lot of time in the past. I understand, sir. I just thought it was appropriate to have some backstory and some context and narrative for those that were trying to understand how we got to where we got. Because there's a lot of folks that want to assess blame, and I think that can be done inaccurately. And so I, I think we need to clear the air to understand fully why we are in the situation that we're in and, and what constituted the claims. So that was the purpose today as part of this discussion right now. All right, we have the motion to appeal the decision by ICRIM to end our coverage. Is there any more discussion, questions, or comments? All right, seeing none, I will call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. The motion carries. Next on the agenda item is action item. It's leadership changes for board officers. Does anybody have any motions that they would like to make at this time or any comments or questions on this topic? You were gonna make the motion. Can make a motion. 
Only if that's the only one we're making at the end. You can do it now. Are there other motions to be made? Oh, you guys want to talk for one minute? Or just get a Facility. Trustee Brichette, did you have uh, something to say, sir? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to nominate Trustee Getty for the position of vice chairman. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any comments, discussion, or question on the motion? I'm not seeing any. We will take a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The motion carries. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Getty. I would nominate Trustee Rochette for Secretary Treasurer. All right. Thank you, sir. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All right, we have a second on the motion. Is there any comments, discussion, questions, anything? All right, not seeing any. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The motion carries. All right. I will make the last motion. Upon conclusion of this uh, meeting, I would like to make a motion for uh, Dr. David Wold to become the chairman of the board of trustees. I uh, look forward to working with him and I'm sure that he will do an outstanding job as the, uh, as the chair. Uh, do I have a second for my motion? Second. Trustee Getty seconds. Uh, is there any comments, discussion or questions? All right, not seeing any, we will take a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The motion carries. That concludes our business. Trustee, meeting is adjourned. Trustee Banducci, can I just make some closing remarks? Oh, I apologize. I did not know that you had any. I, one, wanted to thank all of our trustees for showing up this morning for the breakfast to honor our employees and our staff, staff and faculty for that celebration. It was nice to see all of you there. Um, it was it was wonderful to see you guys work together this week and communicate. And I look forward to working with all of you. Um, we had a great commencement. Um, 850 students graduated from NIC today. 104 dual credit students received their degree. And we had 350 kids walk across. There was a lot of great things to celebrate here today. And um, I just wanted to take a moment to recognize that at the end of this meeting as well that NIC had a great celebration for their faculty, staff, and students today. And I wanted to thank everybody from events and staff to landscaping, to our faculty, to Dr. Silvis and Sarah and Shannon for all the work they did to pull off this today. So um, thank you to them.
Definitely Shannon for getting the regalia on us correctly. <laughs> Appreciate that. Is there anything else? I guess it's sort of a, for the remarks of the good of the order, if anybody had anything else. Okay. All right, then with that, we'll adjourn the meeting. <laughs>